Hi, I have received several requests from students to create a video that explains the integration process of Chartboost Advertising Network into our game. So I created this video in response to those requests. First, what is Chartboost? Chartboost is an advertising network, just like Google AdMob, but more flexible and more customizable. The implementation process is a straightforward one and well documented. Let's start by opening the Chartboost webpage located at chartboost.com. Here you will need to sign up for an account. The registration process is free of charge. I already have an account that I'm using for testing, so I will use the login button to sign in into my account. As you can see, right now I only have one iOS app that is using Chartboost and this is a test app, not published on the Apple Store. We'll start by creating a new app, so we click the Add App button. Next we are asked for a platform for our app. Chartboost supports iOS, Google Play and Amazon Marketplace right now. In our case, we will select Google Play. Next we will enter a name for our app. This doesn't have to be the same name that your app has on the Play Store. It is used for referencing your app in the Chartboost dashboard. So I will enter highway speed here. Then we need to provide the app bundle ID. This is the same as your package ID. So I will switch to Eclipse and will open the project's manifest file in order to copy the package ID from there. In my case, the package ID is cam.neurondigital.highwayspeed, so I will copy it and paste it in the Chartboost dashboard. Then we get to choose an orientation for our app. In our case, the application will only run in the portrait mode, so I will select that. And finally, we can enable test mode that will display testing ads in our application instead of real ads. This is a great way to test the Chartboost implementation, but for now I will leave the test mode disabled and will save the changes. By saving the changes, we obtain an application ID or app ID and an application signature. We will use both these details in our implementation. But we didn't write any code so far. We only added our application in the Chartboost dashboard. It's time to get our hands dirty by writing some code. But first we need to obtain the Chartboost SDK for Android. This will contain the Chartboost library that we will need to add to our project. There are several ways to download the SDK. One of them is by clicking the help link in the toolbar and this will open a new page containing information about the Chartboost integration in our application and links for the SDK download. I'll start by clicking the SDK and integrations and then selecting Android SDK download. Finally, we click the blue button labeled download latest Android SDK and sample project. So beside the SDK, the archive that we are about to download will also contain a sample project, which I highly advise you to import in Eclipse in order to see a good example of implementing Charboost in Android. Next we choose Android integration and this will present a step-by-step -step process of integrating Chartboost into your Android application. This is the guide that we are going to follow in order to add Chartboost advertising network to our project. The overview describes the necessary steps to do this integration. You will need a Chartboost account, which I hope you already have by now, an application into your Chartboost dashboard which is something that we just created earlier, the latest Chartboost SDK, which we just downloaded, and an active campaign for displaying ads. We can see that the minimum Android API level that Chartboost supports is API level 9 or Android version 2.3. We also need a few permissions to be present in our Android manifest file, like the permission to access the internet and the network state and optionally a permission for writing the external storage and obtaining access to the Wi-Fi state. We'll already have the required permissions in the Android manifest file because those two, 
the one to access the internet and the other one to get access to the network state are also required by Google Play Services Library, which we already used in our project. Feel free to add the other two optional permissions to your manifest file if you wish. Now, let's start the integration process by adding the Chartboost SDK library to our project. For that, I'm going to open the archive that we just downloaded and inside this, there's a folder called lib, which stands for library. Here we can find the chartboost.jar file, which is our library. We will need to copy this file into the libs folder of our project. First, let's see if this folder is already present. So by switching to Eclipse, we can see that there's no libs folder available in our project. I will create one by right clicking the project and selecting new and then folder from the menu. I will name the folder libs with lowercase. It is important to keep this notation and we'll press finish. Now we will need to copy the chartboost.jar file from the chartboost SDK archive into our libs folder. I will just drag and drop the file over the libs folder and when the file operation dialog is displayed, make sure that copy file is selected. This will ensure that our file will be copied in the libs folder. And we press OK. Now that the library has been added to our project, we can access all of its classes and methods in our project. The next step is to add the Google Play Services library as a dependency to our project. We already have Google Play Services library referenced in our project, but to double check that, we can right click the project name and select properties from the menu that appears. Next we select Android in the left panel and in the library section, we can see that Google Play Services is already referenced in our project. In case the library is not present, you will need to add it by clicking the add button and select it from the list. The library will have appeared in this list if it was not already included in our project. I will close these windows and the next step is to add a new parameter to our application tag in Android manifest file. This parameter will ensure smooth transition and video playback for our ads. So I will copy it and will paste it in the application tag in our Android manifest file. So this is where the application tag starts and I will paste it the copied text right on the next line, making sure that we are still in the application tag. The next step is to actually import the Charboost SDK library into our activity by using the import statement. But first, let's see where do we want our Charboost ads to be displayed. In a previous lesson, I explained how you can display the ad at the end of the game. In this example, let's add Chartboost ads at the beginning of it. Most of our game logic is implemented in the surface.java file, but in order to display the ads right on the first screen of the app, on the menu screen, we can use the highwayspeed.java file. So back to the implementation guide, I will copy the import statement and will paste it at the beginning of the highwayspeed.java file somewhere between other import statements. The next step is optional as our app will only be displayed in the portrait mode so we'll not implement different screen orientations. Next we need to initialize the chartboost object in our activity and we can see an example of how this can be achieved. So inside the onCreate method after the super.onCreate method call we will initialize our chartboost object and we can do this by calling the start with app id method. This method will take three arguments, the content object, an app id and an app signature. There's an optional step that will allow us to gain more control over the chartboost object and its methods by implementing a delegate object, but this is something that we will not discuss here. And finally, we need to call the onCreate method of the chartboost object by passing the context as a parameter. So I will copy all these lines of code and we'll need to insert them into our onCreate method. 
In order to search for that specific method, I will press Ctrl plus O and the new pop-up window will be displayed that will allow me to search for the specific methods located in this file, in our case the highway speed class. I'll start by typing uncreate and by clicking the uncreate list item, we are pointed straight to the declaration of the uncreate method call. This is a quick way to navigate through your methods. So inside the uncreate method, somewhere at the end of it, I will paste the code copied earlier. Next I will need to replace the app ID and app signature placeholders with their real values. By switching to the charbus dashboard, we can find these values in the app basic settings page. I will copy the app ID and will paste it surrounded by double quotes. We'll do the same with app signature. We're almost there, just a few more steps. The next one is to add specific charboost functions to the activity lifecycle by implementing the on start, on pause, on resume and other activity lifecycle methods. We'll start by on start. We'll copy the chartboost.onStart method call and we'll paste it inside the activities on start method. Again, I will use the counter plus O in order to quickly search for this method and found it. We will just need to paste the copied code at the end of it. We'll do the same for the other methods like on resume, on pause, on stop and on destroy. And the last method on back press which is called when the user is pressing the back button while in our activity, cannot be found by pressing the Ctrl plus O shortcut. This means that the method is not declared in our activity and we need to implement it. So I'll start by typing on back and we'll use the autocomplete feature of Eclipse by pressing Ctrl plus space to generate the method signature. Then inside this method I will paste the code copy and from the guide earlier. And now that our application is almost complete, we just need to call the method that displays our ads. This can be achieved by calling show interstitial method, assuming that we want to display an interstitial ad. We can load or cache the ad request by calling the cache interstitial method. Let's see where we can call the show interstitial method. I tried calling it directly from the onCreate method in the past and I received an error response that charboost onStart method needs to be called first before being able to display our ads. So to avoid this problem I will simply call the show interstitial method right after the charboost onStart method call inside the onStart method of our activity. Now, the show interstitial takes a string parameter which defines where exactly in your application the ad is being displayed. You can choose from several locations like achievement, game screens, game over and so forth. But in our case I will choose main menu. And before testing our app in the emulator, I went and enabled the test mode in order to display test ads. You can do that by selecting your app from the chartbus dashboard, going to the basic settings and enabling test mode. You can choose for how many minutes do you want to be enabled and this feature will automatically disable the test mode so your app will display real ads instead of test ones after that period of time expires. And now, the moment that we were waiting for. We are able to run the application by clicking the run button, selecting the Bluestacks emulator and uh, as soon as the application started, we can see an interstitial test ad from Chartboost, meaning that our implementation has succeeded. The ad also states that in order to display real ads, you will need to create a new publishing campaign in the Chartboost dashboard and to disable the test mode. You can create publishing campaigns by switching to the Chartboost dashboard and selecting campaigns and then publishing. First, make sure that testing mode is disabled, so we will click on disable and then save the changes and finally click on publishing. We need to add a new campaign and we choose network publishing as campaign type. 
In order to obtain more information about creating a publishing campaign, you can also check the short introduction by switching to the chart boost guide and clicking on an active campaign. We get to choose the initial status of our campaign, in this case is on or enabled. The ad type that will be displayed and here we have several options like static interstitial, video interstitial, rewarded video and so on. For this example, I will choose static interstitial. Then we get to name our campaign and I'll give it the name of main menu interstitial. Then we can set the start time and end time for our campaign. I will leave these default options here in order to start the campaign immediately and to never end it. Then we are asked about the platform that our campaign will run on, in our case Android and the application that will be used to display the ads. Campaign logic contains some advanced settings, but what's more interested is the campaign targeting, which will let you choose specific countries that you will like to include or exclude to the list of countries in which your campaign will be available. There are also other options available like financial settings, advanced settings and advanced targeting, but I will not get into more details about this. I will stick with the default options and will click save. Now, even if you successfully created the campaign, it could take up to 20 minutes before it will go live. So if you don't see any ads in your application, this might be the cause. For instance, if I am running the game right now, this will run successfully, but no ads will be displayed. And after about 10-15 minutes, if I am running the game again, we can see that the ads are being displayed successfully. And this is how you add Charboost Ad Network to your application. I hope that you enjoyed the video and learned something from it. Thanks for watching.